let's welcome everybody out today to episode 67 of Utah in the Weeds. Here we are, Tim. We're doing this in person. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been a little while. This this summer cadence has been nice in some ways, but I miss it. Yeah. You know? And so it's good to get to record, and this is a good interview. You know, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Tim Pickett. And I'm Chris Hollifield. And you can find all of our podcasts, all 67 episodes on utahmarijuana.org slash podcast. And today we interviewed uh, the owner of SLC Hayes. Amy Hollenbach. Amy knows a lot about the history of cannabis over the past 30 years, right? You listen to this uh, interview and it's, it's fascinating to go through because she really lived, she really lived the whole thing. Yeah. From from the b- from before the '90s to the California '90s, the, the experience then, of that. Now, what she's doing in Utah with SLC Hayes, right? And she talks a lot about her store, and she's got a patient appreciation day that uh, we talked about in the. We talked a little bit about it in the interview, but I just want to mention it here: Sunday, August fifteenth, uh, at Lagoon. Tickets are fifty-five dollars at SLC oh. Hayes. You can go pick up a ticket there. Her shop is 8585 South State Street. This is going to be a cool event. There's some live music there and a good way to spend the day at Lagoon. We talk about it a little bit in depth in this interview with Amy, so make sure to listen to the whole interview. That way you can find out about the event happening Absolutely. I think from another, you know, the other housekeeping thing for us is Utah Therapeutic Health Center is opening up a clinic in Cedar City in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. August 9th is our first clinic day, 9th and 10th. We're going to be open two days a week down there. The calendar is live on utahmarijuana.org. You can schedule visits now. We are going to be down at the Cedar City Beer Fest this weekend. So come if you're down there. You know, if you want to take a trip down south this weekend, we're going to be there all day Saturday. We're going to give away some stuff in raffles. Uh, We've got some fresh new hats and merch trying to get the word out down in in southern utah that patients have access yeah i'm looking at one of these hats right now i can't wait until they're uh, available to everybody yeah they're pretty they're pretty cool i'm wearing the gray flat bill now and uh it's really getting fun in this industry like we're talking to a lot of people we're getting involved the community's out the weed socials at wb's uh vivi and amy if you listen back a few episodes, we did we recorded up there with them as guests. Those are those are happening. You know, Cole's got his magazine out now and at a regular cadence. The dispensaries are open. All of them are open. There's going to be fifteenth. You know, sometime next year. So yeah, it's a wonderful time to be alive here in Utah, right? <laughs> like it's right. it's exciting. It really is. And then UtahMarijuana.org. I know you mentioned it, but. There is tons of stuff on your website, Tim. Articles, blog articles, plus the podcast. I mean, that's where yeah, you can plus the all podcast, the... plus the uh, Discover Marijuana YouTube. Yeah. Like last week, the podcast was really part of that. You know, the interaction between the two, uh, the two like worlds. The the video with the YouTube and Discover Marijuana. We really just want to give everybody. We we want to build that classroom with the Discover Marijuana series. We want to build the community with the podcast. And we want to help people in clinic. How can people get on your email list, Tim, at utahmarijuana.org? Yeah. Is there a tab there or something that people so can sign up? So one of the best ways, actually, is go to utahmarijuana.org, click on the pre-screen, do a 42.0-second pre-screen, right? Uh, uh, and uh, find out if you qualify or if you, you, know, you think you would qualify for a card, you'll get on our email list. You can scroll right to the bottom of that page and join the email list. You'll stay up to date on... We have information on delivery and what's happening in the industry, what products are being uh, grown available. The podcast episodes are all Oh, there's tons. Of, I, housed I look forward to when I see I'm like, oh, cool, there's another email because I'm always learning something from them. Yeah, it's been fun now. We're on episode 67. We've been doing this for a year and a half. And that just shows, no, we're here. Yeah. We're, we're going to keep doing this. And the information's always going to be there. So make sure you're subscribed. I don't know uh, what podcast player you listen in, but hopefully this podcast is there. If this podcast is not in a podcast player, let Tim or myself know. I'll make sure it gets there. Uh, If you want to come on the podcast, let Tim or myself know. We'd love to probably bring you on as long as you 
have some cannabis related story, right? Yeah. And uh, coming up this fall, we've got some really great guests coming up. Oh, so man. you got to get subscribed. Yeah. Like things are going to heat up. <laughs> Let's get into this interview though with Amy. This is a good one. You guys, uh, thank you so much for listening. Seriously. Uh, without you guys, there would be no Tim and I. So, so thank you so much for listening. Let's get into this conversation. I want to go back to as far back as you want to go the first time you ever used cannabis what uh i mean what was that experience like for you and, and did you use it just recreationally or medicinally uh well um that's oh. funny um <laughs> my, i guess it's medicinally however you yeah, use it right my aunt let me smoke off her joint when i was like 10 or 11 years old one time and uh, cuz i kept bugging her and uh she's my favorite aunt <laughs> she used to take <laughs> me to the rocky horror picture show and then so she was always so jolly and actually she was born deformed so she has really short oh. arms and so they're like only as long as her elbow and she does she only has like a couple of fingers on each one and they're like real bony anyways i think it's really painful and so she used cannabis as pain relief that wasn't why i was using it at 10 or 11 years old but anyways i didn't continue to use it i just oh. like tried it out one time and see what do you remember do you remember that i totally remember yeah i was all giggly uh we actually went to the rocky horror picture show with a bunch of our friend her friends that we usually did that with and uh i can remember that i had a great time that night yep we went to the belly dancing restaurant and it was super fun um I remember being very giggly and talkative. So anyways, um, I'm pretty shy to begin with. So maybe that helped me come out of my show. So I didn't use for even through really in high school. So I didn't really use again till a boyfriend introduced me to it when I was going through cancer stuff in my early 20s. And um, we were living in Hawaii and we had the friend who had it and they could see what I was going through so they just offered it to me and boy was it just changed my whole world with anxiety with pain with help just everything I was going through you were saying cancer stuff yeah do you care uh -huh. to talk a little bit about yeah, that yeah sure or? yeah um so when I was like in my late 20s I got diagnosed with um some uterine and ovarian cancer and uh, I had already been really sick throughout most of my teenage years and even prior to that, which was all immune system related, but they didn't really know that due to probably, I mean, I lived in southeastern Ohio, so <laughs> um, yeah, doctors back then I don't think were advanced as they are now and they didn't know what was causing immune stuff back then or I don't even think it was called immune auto yeah. auto, auto immune, immune disease, disease yeah. or um, a fit deficiency or anything I don't even think those words were used but I would say mostly looking back now and reflecting on my health practices and my wellness practices both mentally spiritually physically definitely um i say probably a lot of it attributed to was environmental because we lived in a coal mining town so i would say that's probably where a lot of the toxicity originated from and then it just compounded from there from bad habits or you know not taking care of yourself not eating right just all that kind of stuff compounded 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 and then you end up in hawaii were you diagnosed with cancer in hawaii uh actually i had been diagnosed prior to that and had a surgery that took care of it and then it came back so this was now the comeback of it and um being in hawaii y your access to everything is limited um, without it being really expensive so when my friend introduced me to the plant and he just grew his own all of his own because I couldn't find it anywhere I said well how do you get this and he says oh I just have to grow my own 
And that's where it all kind of started really taking off in our life. Um, Because I love gardening, so... I just got a hold of some seeds and, <laughs> <laughs> and it was really easy actually in Hawaii to make it happen. So, um, with, Why, what, what was with, easy about it in Hawaii? Well, you have the sun okay, and okay, the yeah, temperatures yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that are just super yeah. fabulous. I would say the hardest thing that oh. we encountered was when it was time to take it down or just keeping the rain off of it because it does rain every day in Hawaii. So for a short amount of time, you know, that's why yeah. everything's so lush and green and beautiful. Are so, these plants like growing over your head? Yeah. These are big, big plants. Yeah. So this was a pretty long time ago. This was, let's see, in Hawaii. This was like back in the early 90s. You didn't want to ca- get caught doing anything like that, right? Yeah. So we grew our plants in the top of the avocado trees. Oh, wow. Wait, so yeah. actually in the top of the tree? Yeah. Right? You'd uh-huh. like put a pot in the top of the yeah. plant? In the top of the tree. Yeah. <laughs> and is that like help was, with the smell of it? Or yeah, what? just all of it. <laughs> yeah. Huh. It wasn't noticeable but like on the ground yeah. so if someone found it you know they weren't they didn't rob you of it if they wanted it sure um or if they found it and didn't want you cult, uh, you know growing it then it out of sight out of mind right you don't get reported so i mean you just have to be cautious about these kinds of right. things you're not, back I mean, in you're not growing date. fields of it yeah right um sh- Definitely not. It wasn't fields. It was only a few plants for personal use, really. But it turned out really good. So we caught on that we had a green thumb. And then we had to go back to California, move back to California, because we had a family member that was um, diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and he was doing pretty bad. So we went back to help the family, really, and help him and just be a support system, because being across an island is not really, you know, supportive for anyone. So uh, back to California, we went to Lake Tahoe, and then, what do you know, like, the plant wasn't available there really either. Okay, so um, they had and this was like they, in the 90s? Like, night like now we're in the late nineties. So they had just passed yep, medicinal in, mm-hmm. in California, and um, so you had to go get this card. The only place to to get it, pretty much in Northern California, was in San Francisco. So it had to be, like, an entire trip had to be planned. San Francisco, I live five and a half hours from San Francisco. So, you know, you had to plan to go into the city. The card was $475 back then. Um, It was good for a year, but... But they were pretty particular about who they were giving out cards to at the beginning. So you had to come with all your medical. Um, yeah, this is before there were some really big court cases yeah. after that a few years when physicians were were involved in whether or not we could talk to patients using our First Amendment right. And that was not established when California decided to pass the law. Yeah, it's And so just, there was a lot of... St- been scary an interesting stuff. oh it was like to plan for this trip okay and to go see this doctor that in itself was a scary thing I'll bet. it was in downtown san francisco in not the financial or restaurant district <laughs> like i said you had to come with 475 dollars cash for wow. this doctor right not really knowing what was going to happen and then what do you do after that because there was no pharmacies or dispensaries really available yet per se like it is now so i lived in lake tahoe and the the closest place to go get medicine was san francisco so that was a full day drive now to go once you i got my card which was awesome um, to go and 
But weren't police still uh, still getting people like in oh, busting people yeah, and causing for problems? So, so long. So why would you? I mean, <laughs> still why? Still to this day, they yeah, are. I mean, still, still to this, a long drive. Still to this to day, not they be 100% are. <laughs> protected. Yeah, really. still to right? this day, they are. So now it's just different. But reasoning. What, what what was your reason to get your car? Just because you wanted to get yeah, a little more protection? Yeah, I, I, I did. I wanted more protection. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because and really. My ultimate end goal was to grow up myself for myself. And they, they would allow that in California? Yeah. No? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, before they changed to recreational, in some counties, like in Oakland County, you were allowed to grow 99 plants for yourself. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You're also yeah, because in California so, it's all, so, hey, it's hey, all county by county. I mean right? if you think that's funny, yeah, it's by county, right? So yeah, it's if all county that's by county. funny, right? So you're also allowed to be a caregiver for other people. Oh, so you can and, grow ninety nine. So for then you, you can, and grow, then 99 can grow ninety nine for you for Amy and, and ninety nine for Chris. Yeah, and ninety nine for Ben and ninety nine for Molly. Oh, this is and great. And so, I'll buy, I'll, how many, and I will pay for your car devaluation. <laughs> you bet. It was. How, how, like, how many acres would 99 plants be? Oh, I. Or I that would it even be. That's, like, 99 well, plants, that's a, lot, I mean, that's a lot of area. That's a lot of area. I'm just thinking, thinking like, if somebody really I mean, I don't did, have enough you, avocado trees to plant <laughs> them in the, the tops of the trees. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't have that many avocado trees in Hawaii. But you're up in Tahoe, so, so different, totally different climate, oh, totally yeah, different growth. Absolutely. So, I mean, really, could, could you pull off a plant in Lake Tahoe? Probably not. In the summertime, you probably could, but you'd have to be very diligent about its cultivation yeah, yeah absolutely so care that so you're, giving you're it. you're in tahoe where when did oh. you come here i came here two and a half years ago with like this fabulous uh business plan that some of my other business partners from california uh, and they had a friend who lived over here and they wanted to start this cbd and cannabis hemp clothing medicinal store and just show utah what the plant can do other than just be a medicine you know because it has so many great benefits that we haven't even touched on yet really as a world and we really uh, and and even on this podcast we haven't had a lot of conversations about Mm -hmm. hemp and like the clothing and the a lot of other things you yeah, can do with the for plant, right? sure there's so much yeah i try to keep as many hemp products in my store as possible even though i'm also a cbd store so there's a health supplement area and a cbd area and then the whole glassware area for those who you know use tobacco type things <laughs> right you still have to say it that way right yeah is, so is they tell so they tell us yes so oh. the store name's slc hayes yes that's our store name what, what's the address 8585 south state street Excellent. in sandy figure for and the listeners Sandy. to go yeah. check out. And you have, tell us what's, like, walk us through your store a little bit. Well, you walk in and it's Hemp Central. It's Hemp Headquarters. So I have um, anything hemp that you can get your hands on, I try to keep oh. in my store. So there's hemp textiles and believe it or not, there's only a few companies making hemp textiles in this our country and there's really only a few handfuls in the whole world um so we need a lot more of them because there's a lot of hemp being processed now and a lot of stems seeds and sticks and yeah as snoop sings about like you're we don't smoke that so (laughs) so what are you gonna do with it well buy you know there's fuel there's textiles there's food there's so many things we haven't even touched on yet so i try to keep that kind of stuff in the and products available in the shop so there's all kinds of socks there's clothing there's towels there's hats there's home decor like candles and incense it's a great place for like gifts oh my you know, gosh yeah. i'm like, super gift like central if you, yeah 
And if you're listening to this podcast, you're likely involved at l- least a little bit in the cannabis like community, yeah. oh, in our yeah, community. For sure. This would be a great place for gifts. This is very timely. Thank Think you. of your back to school. You've got. <laughs> I like the way you're thinking, Tim. Halloween, I like the way you're you've thinking. You've got Thanksgiving. Yeah, and there's shop a lot. Early. Yeah, and then I also have um, another uh, thing we really like to follow in the store is if it's not hemp or from cannabis, then it needs to be eco-friendly or and recycled and a small business. Um, we love women-owned business, and we own, love veteran-owned businesses, and we love people who have the same types of philosophies that we do about just taking care of your own health, wellness, and mental being, and being good to our planet, things like that. So I have a couple of other lines that have nothing to do with cannabis that are all, uh, they're STEM educational so when you said gift central like we do all kinds of education in there there's books galore there's a couch you can come and sit down and read books on cannabis and wellness and health and other things that we do too like red light therapy sound and vibration therapy i've heard red light therapy is really good for you i I I I love it myself that's why we have a room because i my schedule i kept having to cancel my appointments at quintessence so finally i'm like well i better just get myself (laughs) together and you know take care of myself a little better than what i'm doing so we just created one there, and I love it. now we have a red light therapy room there as well. We have a couple of people on staff. We have a medical assistant, um, like CNA, Miss he- uh, Miss Heather, and then uh, an esthetician, Miss Celeste. So, anyways, they're adorable, and everything's by donation. There's no set prices. It's just by wait, donation. Wait, even on like your your that everything Not there to on buy the is retail gonna, store, say, just on the red light, just on the red light therapy, say, and on the sound broke. and vibration therapy. I wish I could. If I could, I would. Yeah. Uh, my business partner doesn't like my philosophy already, and our profit and loss statements are completely opposite from one another and what they should be. You know what I mean? Uh, which leads me into uh, we have a little. A patient appreciation day that quite a few dispensaries and CBD stores have all come together to collaborate and say thank you so much to the patients of Utah and their family and friends. Yeah, let's let's yeah, talk, let's about, talk this. about this because Heck I've yeah. got this I've got this flyer in front of me and it looks to me like it's going to be a a sweet setup at Lagoon. August 15th? We're trying really hard to make it as sweet as possible. That is true. Yes, it's at Lagoon. It's the first annual Celebrate Cannabis Patients of Utah. And it is multiple dispensaries and multiple CBD stores. Um, That also includes some of the farms and processors. Um, There are so many that are involved that put together a patient appreciation day we got together with lagoon and they have offered us these two fabulous pavilions and so we have performances that um afternoon from this lovely musician called coco her name is coco and she writes her own music and she plays the ukulele and she's fabulous so Hopefully she's singing some of her original songs that day. Mm. And then this other local hip-hop group, whom I love and adore, the 420 V-Boys, they're going to be performing that day too. And then there's all kinds of raffles, games, and different discounts going on at the pavilion that the different dispensaries and CBD stores have all come together to contribute. And so we also ended up getting the biggest discount you can get we got twenty dollars off for everybody so now it's fifty five dollars you know for the admission to lagoon yeah wow you so know, 20 it's bucks been off. a while since i've been to lagoon i didn't realize ticket prices were 75 dollars normally know, yeah. get in. So, i mean this is a, a great deal if you're gonna go at least go this day yeah, yeah. you are yeah definitely yeah. now and why- if you're not 
a cannabis patient and you just want to go anyways, then come on down. We're yeah. a great group of people and we love everybody and uh, we appreciate uh, um, everybody. So come on down and just get a ticket anyways and take your family out and have a discounted day. Yeah, so it looks like you've got to you've got to buy tickets at one of these sponsors. So I'm going to read do? them off. You've okay. got OG Cannabis Products oh. in Mill Creek, SLC Hayes, yours, Zen Mart, Terra Health and Wellness in Mill Creek, and some of the sponsors include True North, Cure Leaf, Truce, uh, Utah Vape Guy, Carter's Kids Farm. I mean, this is a pretty good, well-rounded, well-rounded it, event. It and is. And the fact that you've got Mario Wana, oh. right, Mario. Up there being the MC. He's right. a good guy. He's a good guy. He's yeah. so fun and he's great and everyone loves him. So why not have him be the MC? Plus, he's the first patient. So That's right. let him do it. So, yeah, and it's good for all day. I mean, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. It's good for the entire day. So even if you don't want to participate in the appreciation area um, or you don't want to learn about cannabis or you already know about it, then you don't have to hang out there. You can just roll down the river if you want. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, or just so come and get your tickets, you know, show your, For sure. you know, your patient card and save yourself 20 bucks. Yeah. And that's right. I've even extended my hours at my store for the next three weeks so that I don't miss anyone. Well, what tickets. are your hours so, at your store? Uh, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. except okay. for today. Except for- <laughs> <laughs> oh, did we make you shut down early? Well, Jessica wasn't available. She's oh. camping and um, so, I'm you know. So- I feel no, so Oh, okay. gosh. There's no reason to be sorry, you know. We all need to be celebratory of um, getting out and about, you know. I'm really excited to come out, actually, after the past 18 right. months. How did your store, you know, fare through COVID? Because you've had it for two and a half years now. Yeah, so we have actually been open. We're just about ready to have our two-year anniversary. And um, it hasn't been easy, that is for sure. We have had to add many different things that we never thought of, like health supplements. I didn't think that a CBD and hemp store would need that, but lo and behold, we definitely did. And um, all of the clients who come in really seem to appreciate it, and they've learned a lot about immune building because I'm really big on that with my own health. So there are so many products that I found that seemed to be shortage during this, the beginning of COVID time. So I just looked into some really great small brands and what do you know? I brought them into the store. So we have some really great things in there that aren't related to cannabis like elderberry, people appreciate that. Colodial like, silver. Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, that's good stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think people appreciate the fact that you're not just do, do, and people come in and they're, they're like, Oh, I really appreciate you're not just selling CBD. They really do. Right. Like yeah. I can get a little bit more. Um, we originally designed the store so that it could be very family friendly from visual standpoint as well as educational standpoint, which are both really important. Um, One, I didn't want it to look scary to a family, to somebody who wanted to, to a grandma bringing in their grandchild who's out for the day doing something, or a family who's out on Saturday running an errand. Um, I wanted the whole family to be able to come into the store and look at all the different things that we can do with this plant other than just get high, which is also CBD and uh, medicinal. And not that there's anything wrong with getting high if that's what you want to do, then have have a party. Yeah. But there is, there is more to it yeah it does have its little stigma that comes along with just that highness you know of of just using the plant to get high and it being recreational right so it was really important for us to lay a foundation on being a good role model and a good educator on everything the plant can do and for good uh, and for business ideas i mean there's we need a lot more textile companies so if you don't want to grow the plant for medicine you can 
broker all your um, plant matter off to, you know, a textile company. Um, So, yeah, I've even looked for paper. I remember when I started like Mm -hmm. my utahmarijuana.org and the clinic, I thought, oh, you know what I need is I need my business cards printed on hemp paper. How cool would that be? Because that'd be, that just makes sense. Doesn't it? It was so hard to find. It's the hardest. And mm -hmm. I mean, I ended up, sorry, I I can't find it. No, it's the hardest thing. And one um, project that I'm actually working on right now, I'm super excited about it, that I'm working on with Hemp Zoo, which is this small awesome hemp textile company down in San Diego, California. And um, they have made this fabulous hemp coverall, right? And so hemp is breathable. It's antibacterial. It lasts longer than cotton. So I'm trying to get the farms, especially here in Utah, to have all the cultivators start wearing hemp as well as the socks, the hats, and their coveralls instead of just wearing this uncomfortable polyester from, you know, a scrubs giant corporate company that comes in and and one of the Oh, you've um, been to the grow facilities and I've they're all in scrubs. I've been to some of them. Huh? Yeah. They are. <laughs> I have been to some of them. Some of our um are are in lab coats and some are in scrubs. Yep. And I mean, it's kind of the easiest really, you know, because I would hope there wouldn't be bugs. And if there were, I hope they would only be ladybugs. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, they show up on, you could see really easy on, on scrubs without different pockets and all seams and things like that. So we have these coveralls that the farms haven't really caught on to yet. So we're going to need to work on that. But um, because I think it would be really great, um, Utah is one of, one of the reasons that I came to Utah was because it was really fun to look oh. at the regulations that they put on CBD. Okay, one of the few states that really heavily regulated CBD, right? So I found that very interesting because, well, I mean, you're only going to have serious businesses right Mm because they have to follow all these guidelines and they have to go through all these different processes which is money uh backing um to have their either farm or store or medicine be regulated here and so i thought that was really interesting and i really liked that they wanted cbd regulated as well as thc because i think that's really important because well, all of it is important to know where your medicine came from. Yeah, what their cultivation practices are, who they are as a business. And that leads me kind of full circle back to the hemp coveralls is and how hard it is to find hemp paper. So I've been trying, one of the other projects I've been working on is being a CBD retailer, all this CBD comes in, right? I have to put it on the shelf and it comes in in plastic and it comes in in a box and then it comes in um, vacuum sealed in plastic and holy cow, it's driving me bonkers because we should be using hemp recycled paper goods for packaging all this hemp medicine or glassware or something like that and no plastic whatsoever it seems a little um seems a little silly it right does. We, a little contradictory a yeah, little right like we're, we're for here we are yeah. in the hemp and cannabis industry right that this plant could save our planet let's be real and then we're packaging it up in and we're just in, doing all the normal things uh, yeah all to the get normal quick you. quick things yeah. yeah so there is a packaging company as well there that's just trying to get things rolling and holy cow breaking the habits is as difficult as it gets I yeah could, wow i didn't even think about all that mm-hmm I wonder, gosh, one day, one day it will become more. I think normal. so, I think, you, know, you know. More and more I think so, will. because the education is just really getting rolling, you know. Like the snowball is so small, we could barely throw it, 
you yeah. know. So it needs to snow, and then we <laughs> need to make our snowball bigger to get this ball rolling. Um, so that when we say we're from the cannabis industry and we produce medicine, that it's also the cultivation practices from what they're wearing to the um, soils that they're using. Um, it would be like how glorious would it be if everyone was using biodynamic soil and the a soil was alive and well and feeding your plants with because there's good bugs in there doing all that mulching the soil and getting all that ready right giving us all everything so that we don't have to feed additional nutrients oh. mm-hmm and then all the way from the packaging to the distribution all of it, to the from all everything. of it you know be a real support system for making it full circle um how the plant can really be much more than just something to get high off of or pain relieving or anxiety relieving yep we're missing the boat the big big boat Hopefully we get on that boat pretty soon. <laughs> I think we've got a ways. I'm a little, gosh. I'm, if there's anybody out there that wants to help us <laughs> build this boat and get a bigger snowball, like, please come help us. Well, I definitely, yeah, I know the, um, the Global Hemp Association struggle. that's around in yeah. Utah, right? And they were doing these these uh, socials and they were involving other people in the industry and this was before COVID and now they're tr- they're really trying but it does seem like you're in an uphill battle. It's it's uphill, yeah. And I can't imagine how much our industry has actually declined with advancement over the past 18 months due to COVID, right? Because... Um, well, everyone's habits are different and some businesses didn't make it and have shut down and, you know, we're, um, I know a lot of people that are struggling and mentally too, you know, just all of this has been such a change for everybody. So to open the box again and get excited about really birthing this plant instead of just opening a dispensary which is totally needed because um you know otherwise i am out on the street looking for (laughs) for my medicine you know right yeah or you're having to drive five hours yeah to san francisco all the way back i mean we need we definitely further five hours to san francisco from utah (laughs) from utah well it depends on your time machine yeah, you know, or how right? fast you drive, I guess, right? Well, Amy? no, I'm a fast driver, so I could get there quickly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few police officers around that would confirm I could get there quickly. <laughs> what do you think? What are your thoughts on the uh, on the Utah medical cannabis, like becoming legal here and all of that? I mean, were you part of any of that? Well, that um, all actually got voted on before I arrived. That's true. Um, That's true. But yeah. it was one of the things um, that encouraged me to come here, uh, which was before the whole COVID thing. So I'm so glad for. I just was. California has, um, and Nevada too, which are the two main states that I've operated my cannabis businesses out of for the past like 12 years. They have taken such a different direction when recreational came on to play. And um, there's a ton of people who can offer what recreational has to offer, um, which is great. And we need more people out educating and trying to build on these other areas that are just lacking right now. And I love the plant so much that I just try and devote as much time, energy, and effort that I can into it. Um, Before it went recreational, um, I was privileged enough to be part of a roundtable group that we were hired from the state of California to help them develop the medical industry rolling into 
the recreational industry, it was really important for them to try and salvage the farmers and the original people that formed the cannabis community, um, which was mainly on the West Coast about probably 30-some years ago, right? Yeah. People like Jack Herrera and people like Dennis Perrone and Brownie Mary and just with and um soma um without people like that really paving the way for all of us and doing what they did with their putting their freedoms on the line then none of us would be here today we would still be probably out searching the street for a joint or something right not the safetyest thing to do so do you like the medical program it sounds like you're business does better with a medical program in general kind of separating the recreational or the adult use from well yeah once once um the farm bill passed there was a real explosion of i'm looking for some some words some imitation i'll call it imitation um especially cbd products and coming in from other countries not being tested, um, no basis of what was in it, um, no quality control. And with me having a family member who had MS, obtaining CBD, even in California, was the hardest thing I have ever had to do in the cannabis world. Five years ago, finding CBD for him that was quality, that wasn't tainted in any way with pesticides, with chemical residuals, with alcohol residuals. Oh my goodness. And for it to be, have consistency for him to respond. This was a, this is a really advanced, um, sick young man. And um, so the consistency of the medicine and the cannabis that he was getting was of utmost importance. We saw a huge difference with our own research and our own logging of different applications and different products that we would get for him. And it could be anything from driving to Colorado to flying to Washington to finding growers in California that and there's there especially back then before this farm bill got uh passed there wasn't a whole lot of really money and profit right in the cbd industry and so to find that was the hardest thing possible and when he went without it it was huge declines in his health um everything from and he's already in a wheelchair and needing care and nursing 24 7 so when you're already in that situation and you see huge declines you're doing everything in your power to make sure that the good medicines that you're finding that what can you do to help them keep producing good medicine And when you find a medicine that is not of quality, I mean, I feel like it's my obligation at this point as a patient and as a caretaker um, and a caregiver to try and educate our patients and our own selves out there about taking it into your own hands if you're not responding well to... an application that you're using of a cannabis product why there'll be an answer as to why and there'll be an answer as of as to what reactions you're having and why you're having that too and you know they almost all lead back to the same thing and that's dirty medicine so having clean tested regulated medicine which is probably going to be from a smaller farmer because to have control of it in the growing environment right is harder and more challenging the bigger it gets right and then also i mean the cannabis industry 
holy cow, the strains change just like the weather and so does everything else. You know, we're just changing day by day, hour by hour almost with products, with development, with different compounds that we're finally researching enough to find out, oh, CBG is great for sleep, right? Or certain strains are great to grow for anxiety and bottle a spray for anxiety, you know. So finding all that out and moving forward with that is what I really wanted to continue to be a part of. And before I got into the cannabis industry, I was in the pharmaceutical industry um, and didn't really care for how that was operating. So the whole plant medicine, and that's also what really took my health into a real positive direction, was introducing plant medicine, learning how to use it, learning what terpenes my body favored and what applications my body favored was a big part of why I feel better and operate daily on a more positive note. What are some of the products and terpenes that you you really favor? Oh gosh, well I love linalool. That's absolutely my ultimate favorite because <laughs> well, one it's calming, so that's the lavender smell that you're familiar with if you're wondering what linalool smells like. Um, it's the nice calming lavender smell and has calming effects. I love it well because it has that effect, but I'm also uh, won my first cannabis cup in California growing lavender so. Uh, that's the other reason I love it. Soma's lavender, one of the old Rastafarians, his old strain. So it's really beneficial for pain relief, for sleeping, for inflammation. It's huge for an appetite stimulant. So if you need help with the appetite, then linalool is is a great, usually, terpene for you. Um, another awesome terpene is myrcene, which I love myrcene at nighttime because I have too much to do during the day. <laughs> so that's kind of your tropically uh, mango-ish smelling terpene. And what are some other favorites that I have? Well, I'm really a favorite. When I use cannabis... THC cannabis, I'm a big favor of sativas because I have a lot going on all day long. So as much as I'd really like to just smoke, you know, Wiz Khalifa Kush all day long, um, I'm not going to get anything done. So I love lemon terpenes, lemonine and pinene. Those are awesome terpenes for myself. You know, it's to each person's light own liking and what every person has a little bit more different reaction than some people. Some people can't take lemonine at all or pinene because it gives them anxiety. So you can also get some bad side effects from all the terpenes as well as not good. Like if you use citrus at nighttime, you might not sleep. (laughs) So, you know, anyways. So if you need to pull an all-nighter, there's a good one for you. There is. A little sativa, a little lemonine. Yep, definitely. I love lime all day long. What would you tell somebody? I know I ask this almost on every episode. I'm going to ask you, though, Amy, is, is people that are listening that maybe are on the fence of trying cannabis as a way to to help them with something, you know, uh, some medicinal reasons. What what would what kind of advice or suggestions would you tell them? Well, I'm only going to go with suggestions yeah. because I'm not a doctor. Well, sure, sure, sure. And we're not on TV cuz I do play one on TV. <laughs> but um no, seriously. It's only going to be suggestions and I have had bad experiences not myself, but okay. I have had other people did not use slow, shall we say. 
And so they hallucinated the heck out of themselves for <laughs> about eight or more hours. And um, if that's not what you're looking for, I would say definitely start slow. And starting slow could be, it could be a THC gummy or a nibble of one, or it could be a CBD product, you know, anything from a topical to a gum to a vape cartridge or, I mean, there's so many products on the market. They have so many options now for us. It's almost confusing. And do you want to be discreet with your use or, you know, do you want everyone to see your vape pen? So it's kind of going to be your own personal what how you feel about it you know i don't care what anybody thinks about my vape pen or my stick of cbd gum but if somebody else cares then you can be discreet if you want to be and then also i mean you can if you're not using a lot of prescription medications I would say you're probably going to have a lower tolerance. And so keep that in mind when you go get a product. You might not want to vape a product because that's going to hit you really quick and really hard. So if you're not already have a tolerance to any kind of pain relief medications, and I would say that would be prescription ones from your doctor. Or you're not already using, like, uh, substances. Then your tolerance is probably going to be low. Oh. And keep that in mind. So I've had a couple little um, adorable old ladies come in to my store for educational purposes. So they came in and they went through the whole process of getting their card. And they were so excited. And they went down to one of our dispensaries that has the THC products. And um, I don't know what was said. So I can only go with what the little old lady was telling me. But um, she ate an entire gummy. And then she decided to eat another one an hour later. Oh, and, look out. <laughs> and Watch this. Now, she has been um, religiously going to church every Sunday for 70-something years. <laughs> and she has never smoked a tobacco cigarette or a clove cigarette or any other type of cigarette, for that matter. So never had her mind altered nope, by anything. No mind altering on anything, I don't think. And then also hasn't, it has never drank drink alcohol yeah. i'm asking her all this when she's in my store it's always wait did she have the gummy in your store no oh, I goodness no because i don't have those <laughs> no there, well, no I, I didn't know if maybe she she ate um, them before yeah she came there no we don't have open houses with with those kind of gummies <laughs> but we do with the gum we do with gum so it's so not no, she's, thc uh, gum so she's, yeah so she she really had quite a um, journey okay and it lasted her about six hours she said and she didn't know it was going to do that and so you know there's an example of especially in Utah with the elderly people and then just the church in general and so many people uh, practicing those yeah, ways of life. Yeah, right? they are their ways. Yeah, uh huh. So I would say any if any of those people are out here listening, start low and go slow, which we recommend anyways. But you know, some people like to just dive off the deep end. I think that's a common you know recommendation. I think you say that even a yeah, lot. Yeah, I mean too, we Tim, say that all start, the time, and, and it really start, is a matter of like yeah. every patient needs that personal you know like a guide like here here fi- let me help you find just the right dose oh right? it's so hard too to recommend a dose of any type to really anybody because everyone's going to react differently right. to a terpene to a delivery method and then they have their well own. and then they only have their own free will and choice about Absolutely. what they're gonna you know they're gonna listen 
and they hear they might hear different things than you than you are oh. thinking you're saying. Absolutely. And they go home and take a gummy, and then they take another one. An and hour later. I mean, yeah. um, even in Utah, <laughs> with our strict regulations, the gummies look as delicious as can be. You know, <laughs> 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 I would seriously eat a whole bag. Don't anybody go off and do that. But I mean, I've eaten <laughs> three bags before, so yeah, yeah, yep, yep, and yep, and it's. I don't recommend that to anybody. So, anyways, but I would do it again. Well, you know, sometimes we forget, like if, if you think about the first time you ever used, you know, smoked a, a oh, joint yeah. or, or smoked out of a bong, you know, that one hit and you were gone, right? I mean, right. at least it was for me, you know, if you go back yeah, quite you're, a few you're, years. You're sitting in the so, corner talking to yourself. But you know? now that we've built up a little bit of a tolerance, it's like sometimes we're like, we forget that right. people have to start real small real, real small low. yeah yeah you know mm-hmm. or or we even know how to if you do smoke too much or eat too much we know how to handle it eh, just chill out <laughs> right relax, do these things out. change your schedule yeah right yeah, yeah. and They're, you can be honest about it too i find that for me being honest about it around other people you know is gives people um, more freedom, right? If you use a little too much, being able to say to your partner, your spouse, your girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever is there, oh, wow, I'm a little bit, I, I'm a little bit high right now, or I'm a little stoned right now. I, you know, you can't, we can't do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be as reliable <laughs> right now. Right. And that's okay. But that takes a while too. That's even a next step yep. from being using to, to being open about your to use to open. somebody else. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, talking about terpenes again, there's even terpenes that are really good for um, if you took too much THC. So the um, pepper terpene is really good for... I've heard this before. Counteracting Counteracting a little bit of THC psychoactivity in the paranoia. And then, mm -hmm. and so if you don't have, and so if you could have black pepper around you, you could have a hot pepper around you. Um, and suck on that. <laughs> wow, I, I didn't have to try that. Oh, mm-hmm. shoot. You might have to call the fire department regarding your tongue and your mouth. But, <laughs> Just but, drink a lot of water. Yeah. It's maybe the water that's yeah. making you. you know, and <laughs> lemon yeah. also. So we had this one guy in um, California. We used to go to these farmer's markets as vendors, okay? Before the law changed. Yeah. When you were a medical card ho- holder. We had farmers markets throughout the whole entire state. They were cannabis farmers markets, <laughs> and the farmers could go there and, um, well, we called it exchange, exchange and donate each other's products back and forth. Um, and so, this was in California. This is in California. They don't, they don't do this anymore, though? Nope. You're not allowed to do that now um, because of the um, recreational law that okay. came into right. play. Right. You're not... A, there's actually less access for patients really in need in California, right? Because yeah. of the recreational yeah. law. Yeah. It really hurt access to and uh, pricing uh, to the medical community in California, for sure. Um, and the other Pacific states that did that as well, too. Yeah, it did. Um, but, you know, the bigger picture is the bigger picture. So, and and that's to generate taxable revenue. commodities mm-hmm. and revenue. So, anyways, they're doing a dang good job at that. So, we have to give them that. But, yeah, access became really hard for patients, right? And so, we had these farmers markets. And not just farmer, not just the patients, too, but... Because if you lived in a county that had a high grow your own number, then you were allowed to do something with your excess product. And so these farmers markets formed. Okay. And so they're really great. Um, It's a great way to, um, it's how a lot of the companies that ended up going big that are still around today that built their brand kind of how they built their brand you know is they started at the farmer's market and then you know found a backer and were able to go legal and go through all those channels and have a giant big warehouse now 
45,000 square feet and, you know, have it all pre-going to cookies if you're good enough. And so now that's the industry in California. So I'm not part of that industry. <laughs> so I like the small farmer, small medicine, you know, patient appreciation type of where you can really, I like one-on-ones. I have one-on-one -on -one people all day long that come in asking questions some have come from a dispensary and they're like, oh, so-and-so told me to come and ask you the question. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, but she's a pharmacist. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Sounds like I, you should get a job as a pharmacist. Well, I mean, no, that's where we're all really like collaborating with one another is so the pharmacist definitely understands all the chemical compounds and all those terpene compounds and they understand all that and then we have a cultivator that's had their medical card since 1997 right and i've been growing my own strain since since then and gotten rid of some and obtained some strictly because of how it affects you and the side effects or the flavors um, you know, everything gets so trendy and changes so much that you have to change with the times. And if you can't do that, you'll just get smothered and stomped on. So, but being able to do that is excellent research for all of us mm -hmm. since we weren't legally allowed to be researching and developing right over the past 30 or 50 years since we got shut down in the 30s right and so there is so much work to catch up on and so now you have the pharmacist that is the professionally school educated right in the chemistry and pharmacology and then you have your street educated person like myself who has had to learn what strains helped me, what strains um, were causing my anxiety, what was keeping me up at night. And that was all my own individual uh, research. I took that responsibility on myself, trying to figure out why my health wasn't improving or why it would decline when I used this product or didn't have that. And so now, um, I think it's actually really great that we do have like a doctor pharmacist on staff there and we can claim that. And as we all continue to work more together, they will learn more of the cannabis research and terminology and we will all learn medical terminology and pharmacology and understand that better so you know two worlds yeah collide. and eventually they'll there will be much more integration of both those yes. worlds as we go forward right? something uh, that i really great. look forward to um is integrating those departments together yep. yeah something they've been completely divided for decades and um i'll have to say I disagree with that completely, you know, um, because I use both in my own health. You know, there's a time and a place where you absolutely need, um, like a prescription. For example, I threw my back out and there was no getting away from the pain I was in, you know. Um, I have some of the best products around and nothing I had was even touching it. So I just had to. You know, that's when I was so thankful for the ER doctor and the prescription of muscle relaxers and a little bit of pain relief, you know, for a few days to get me past all the spasming that I was going through. And, and so, but I don't want to use it every day, yeah. you know? Right. So I'm definitely a fan when I need it. And I love uh, definitely making sure I get all my vitamins and my minerals. And I can't do that through cannabis. So, you know, I have my awesome nutritional doctor that makes sure I get my vitamin shots, you know. So the two worlds together are, are I think, can do great things. And um, that's where the medical industry, like it's time. They're ready 
you know, doctors and veterinarians, friends of mine, a lot of them are going back to school and re-educating um, and taking only nutritional classes or only plant medicine classes or herbal herbalist classes so that they can have more education and be talking to a bigger um, patient group on different types of alternative choices that we do have and really just using pharmaceuticals for you know emergency type or really disease typed applications right yep Mm -hmm. everyone would feel better such an interesting story, Tim. Absolutely. Sure. We've covered a lot of different things, <laughs> but uh, it's been a great conversation. Yeah, it's and been super fun. I I'm excited you about your from oh, my you did? store. Yeah. Yeah, I did. So here's some examples of things that are in my store. Oh, and look at this. They're, oh. Uh, mm-hmm, and all kinds of things for you guys. So, so let's let's talk about some yeah. of why, why so we're, we're still So we here. have hemp towels. So a uh hand towel. It's uh, hemp and cotton. Yep. Really Hemp cool. and organic cotton. So, you know, you can have hemp towels in your bathroom or kitchen. And I have um, hemp reusable coffee and tea filters. Look at that. What? I know. Who knew? No, it doesn't get you high. <laughs> you, you pour over and the coffee. I know it like sounds like a good filter? idea. That is actually but a good it's idea. not edible, but it is reusable. Oh, yeah. this is cool. Okay, so, so that's really cool. For people listening, this is it's like this cloth hemp. I mean, it's yeah. like, it looks it like is. a hemp mask. You just put it in your coffee maker. And this will actually save through. you some money, too. Yeah, I mean, and, like you're, right. and I mean, you're re- re- reusing instead of, like, throwing out coffee filters, and it's hemp. I mean, especially now that there's so many growers and so much hemp and cannabis being produced nation and worldwide. Yeah. We have all this excess stems, seeds, again, and leaves that Snoop Dogg doesn't recommend we smoke, right? And so we have <laughs> to do something with it and and so anyways there's what, all these different there, products Tim? so i've got some cbd gum here. that's Broad one of my favorite Spectrum, products around right Mint, now 200 milligram cbd and these are and all products you can get in your store yeah. right now right yeah mm-hmm. this is really cool so that's I've a great i've never tried any gum i mean this is a good concept oh well that's a local company and they're registered and a local, let's yeah see. of course they're it's called vibe gum and okay. um Everyone that I've had using it really loves it for anxiety and panic and a quick calm. Huh. So there you go. If you want to try some gum. And it's all really good ingredients, so there's nothing bad in there. We have a couple dentist offices that even have it now. And um, then the other item is a hemp candle. And this is what what I won one of my other, well, I won five. You're making me crazy. Yeah, you're making me crazy. That's one of my favorite scents. It's very tropical-y and calming. um, Oh, yeah, this is really cool. Yep. That is a High Times Cannabis Cup award-winning product. Um, Let's see. I won two High Times Cups in Sacramento with that product. And then that scent, and then I also won two with the candle with a different scent, and then we won in Michigan for best CBD massage candle. Oh, really? Yeah. And so there's all hemp wicks, so they're non-toxic, and... Hand-poured, THC-free, hemp wicks. Yeah, these candles are going to... I mean, these. Yeah. This is great. And then the other thing I brought was oh, this, this is doesn't have any CBD, hemp, or THC in it, but oh. it's one of my favorite tea brands, period. And I'm a huge tea drinker, and that's why I brought you the filter as well. Yeah. So you can try it. It's a local brand too, the Queen's Tea. Oh. I, I met love these, at, these the people Queen's at, at Farmers tea. Market at the downtown Farmers Market. Yep, they, you can. Uh, they, you can these, also these get it at SLC Hayes. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. This was a few farmers markets ago. Uh-huh. The downtown farmers. The Queen's market. Tea. Oh. The Queen's I, uh, Tea. Actually, you know, I need to, I need to interview him on, on my other podcast. Yeah, on I am Salt, I am Salt Lake. Lake. 
And so I love the Queen's Tea. They're one of my favorite brands. Um, and uh, they blend everything themselves and hand select all the ingredients, which is what we like to do like at stuff. SLC His. What's, hand select everything there. Again, great for gifts. What's the address again, Amy? 8585 South State Street in Sandy. And you're on Facebook too. I'm looking actually yes. on your Facebook page, which is tons of cool information and photos. Is this little French bulldog, is that a real little Frenchie? Yes. Is that your little dog? That's Winston Hayes. I, I've always wanted a little Frenchie. <laughs> well, he is pretty mad that he didn't get to come. We so, should have brought him. So, um, anyways, he, he eats the rock star of the whole thing. So. Yeah, I want to come just to come hang out with the dog. You should, because there's people that come and hang out with him on a daily and weekly basis. He well, that's is, pretty cool. Yeah. He's the coolest guy ever, and he'll definitely give you lots of love when you come. So count, yeah. on, count on that. Count and on that. And then again, the Lagoon thing is happening on August 15th, which is a Sunday, which is. I mean, is the perfect way to spend your Sunday, in my opinion, right? We At put the a Church lot of, of thought Lagoon. into that, so the everyone The Church of could Lagoon come. for $55, $20 <laughs> off, yeah, and take you and your family up there. But come you know, into SLC Hayes and buy your ticket there. Yeah, yep. That's right. And uh, support Amy. Thank you. I mean, let's keep her. Let's keep her in business, you guys. Yeah. And, and uh, no, she, I, I think she's really great, great for the community. I mean, I think absolutely. I, I, oh, I do. Yeah. I mean, we definitely There's, need this resource yeah. for the community. Yeah. And keep your immune system built too. Okay. Even yeah. if you don't want to use cannabis or hemp products, we have really great immune and health products in there. I have a couple um, pine resin products that okay. have kept a couple little old ladies healthy for a year and a half. <laughs> that must just make you feel so good. Oh, it that does. You're, that yeah. you're helping these yeah. people out. Yeah, uh, it puts a big smile on my face all day long. That is it's, so awesome. It's why I do it, yep, um, because to share how I got healthy and then to see other people is just winning. Yeah. You got to love it. You know, that's why we're here. Love and share. So anything else Trying you want to do my part, anything else you want to mention, Amy, before we wrap this up, I come out wanna, to Lagoon Day. Yeah. Come out to Lagoon Day. After that, come to SLC Hayes. Well, you come to SLC Hayes before Lagoon before, Day. Before, you got to get your tickets. Because yeah. you can't get yeah. your tickets on the day of, at yeah. the date. You have to get them before. You do. Yeah. You, ha- you need to get them before August 14th. So plan ahead. Very cool. Come Absolutely. On in. Great, great joining you guys. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, thanks for me. coming out. You guys are a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you so we much, Amy. It. Oh. Anything you want to add here before we wrap this up? The Dude. only thing I uh, want to add is stay safe out there. Yep, everybody. All right, guys. Have a great night. <laughs>